Good morning, Church. Welcome, welcome to Love Lighthouse of Faith Tabernacle. Um, shall we rise as we sing Holy, Holy, Holy?
take your seats. So, good morning, church. Um, lately, um, I am filled with anxieties and overwhelming thoughts, and uh, I often wonder and worry, do I have enough resources to be able to sustain me in the coming months or years? Do I have enough faith when faced with troubles? Um, do I know the right scriptures to defend my faith when the time comes to stand up for my faith? Am I doing enough to live and not just survive in this world that we live in? All random thoughts, but all summarizing how worried I am that I might not be enough or what I'm doing is not enough and that there's a deep longing for some satisfaction somewhere else. But once you start to focus on God, His words, His love, it's comforting. You get a perspective of how, how you view things. You are reminded that there is no satisfaction in this world outside of Christ. We live in a temporary world and we will constantly long for the things that will satisfy us, but it will never be enough. Some will do the trick, but after some time, you long for more. Only He can satisfy, and the thought of having salvation, having Him back you up by His blood is comforting. Knowing He will provide and sustain you is very reassuring. So this morning, may we enjoy His presence as we give Him the praise and glory that He, that he deserves.
is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Let us rise as we sing our last song.
Father, we thank you for today, O oh Lord, for this opportunity um, that you have given to us to gather together and worship you, O oh Lord, as a family. Um, perhaps some of us here today are, uh, you know, in your presence, we are struggling with sin, O oh Lord, and we just ask for forgiveness for our sins, O oh Lord, and we just thank you for uh, being faithful to us, O oh Lord, uh, despite, you know, us being unfaithful sometimes, O oh Lord. Um, but nonetheless, we also want to give thanks, O oh Lord, for the good things that happened last week. Um, we hold on to your promise that in all things, whether good things or bad things, O oh Lord, um, you work for the good for those who love you and are called uh, to your purpose, O oh Lord. Lord, we want to extend our prayers for those who are on their way here. Uh, please keep them safe, O oh Lord. And we also want to pray for today's speaker, O oh Lord, uh, Reverend uh, Raymond Lu, O oh Lord. Please uh, use him and um, share your word to us, O oh Lord. Please give us a humble heart, a heart of acceptance, O oh Lord, to uh, accept your word, O oh Lord, today. And once again, O oh Lord, we just give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, please remain standing as we sing.
please be seated. Uh, so today, allow me to introduce uh, to you guys our speaker. Uh, this is his first time to speak uh, at our church, and I'm happy that he did not get lost. Praise God for that. And just a short introduction. Um, he's a graduate of Ebenezer Bible College, and currently he's a, past, a part-time pastor at Jubilee Evangelical Church. So without further ado, let us all welcome Reverend Raymond Liu. Good morning. Thank you, Ho Taki. Uh, why don't we look at the person next to us and say good morning? Yeah, it's a beautiful morning. I'm amazed of your church and the name of your church. There's a lighthouse in Makati. Amen. Wow. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for the introduction. Uh, actually, I, after, after, uh, after I, we studied in Ebenezer Bible College, I came, by the way, from the Christian Missionary Alliance. Uh, after that, we were given a privilege to serve in a Chinese church especially in Cotabato City uh, under the UE, uh, you know, UECP. And after that, uh, if uh, some of you know, uh, Reverend Joseph Shaw, he said, why don't you come to this opening and, uh, and study? My problem is uh, I don't know how to speak Chinese, except uh, that I have a Chinese name uh, and maybe that's why they want me to go to provinces and uh, uh, to Cotabato City. And uh, because uh, many pastors are not, uh, Chinese pastors are not going there. So uh, at least uh, uh, we are from, from Mindanao. And, uh, and praise the Lord for the privilege. Uh, some ask me, are you, are you Chinese? Uh, Someone said, you are tapit lang. Uh, that means you are 11 o'clock. You are almost a Chinese, but you are not. <laughs> uh, my father uh, is a 75% Chinese. My grandfather from China married. There's intermarriage from the Subano tribe, from the Cebuano. So I, I call myself uh, Mexicano. <laughs> And my name is Raymond Liu. Uh, I, I have my wife with me, uh, see Faith. Her name is Faith. And she has been a partner in ministry for this uh, almost 30 years now. That I, can't, I can't believe it. And uh, it used to be, uh, when you were a pastor, it used to be that, uh, yeah, she worked with me as a partner. She's always at the, at the music, she's always at the choir. So praise the Lord for that privilege. Now, um, yeah, I'm here not to talk about myself, right? Uh, shall we pray before we look at God's word, Father? We thank you for your good. And Lord, we are here to offer you our praises. Thank you for the good health and thank you, oh God, for keeping our family, keeping us, and some of us may be here, Lord, uh, to sing praises, and some of us are here out of our hurts. And Father, we pray that you will just minister to each one of us right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm looking at the flower, but, uh, well, maybe all of us uh, understand what if, uh, what if one of you receive a flower, or some of you receive a flower? What does it mean? Yeah, uh, and some would say killing, uh, and I uh, you know it may mean someone cares, right? And you guys, if you give flower, a flower to someone, what does it mean? It means that you care for somebody, right? Well, there's a great quote from Bob Kishan, 
of uh, Captain Kangaroo. And this is, by the way, in the 80s. And he said something like, attention is like a bouquet, a daily bouquet of love. Wow. Attention is like a daily bouquet of love. That means if you give attention uh, to someone, it is like giving, expressing your love, giving him, giving her a bouquet of love. Isn't it amazing? And I believe attention is something that we give out to our friends, to our families, and even in our home, and even in this family, the family of God. Amen. We give each one attention. We give each one care. We are a caring church. Now, we have been to a number of churches. And I couldn't tell, I, I couldn't even tell Andrew because those are those were many churches. And I realized that every church has its own personality. And it has its own character. And it has its own strength and weakness. And even here in Lighthouse, you have the strength that other churches do not have. Amen? So I believe that you are original. Amen? This is an original church. You are not a copy of some churches. That means when God brought you here, it is not because He wants you to be a copy of other churches. He wants you to be as you are, the place of the church where God can use. And you have the strength, you have the personality, but one thing is sure in each of the churches. The church must be a caring church. Can we say that again? The church must be a, a caring church. The scripture today describes the church in formative years. When the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, came down and um, descended like a dove on Christ's disciples and empowered them as witnesses of God's grace. And it gives us a picture of the early church. That's how we become a church, because of the Holy Spirit. You are a church, and I am a church. Can you say that to the person to you? You are. You are a church. <laughs> you are a church. I am a church. What makes us a church is the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that is our common ground. We call each other brother, brothers and sisters in Christ because the, our common ground is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit living in you, indwelling in you, is the same Holy Spirit living in my heart. So we are part of that family. Now where God's people are, there is a church. Amen? Where God's people are, uh, this is, uh, we are now in, uh, at the eighth floor. And where God's people gather, there is a church. And we must remind ourselves that we do not go to the temple. Amen? We bring God's temple wherever we are. Have we realized that? We do not go to the temple, but we bring God's temple to our homes. We bring God's temple to places, to workplaces, to our business, to our schools, to our friends. We bring this temple to play. We bring this temple to work. And because the Holy Spirit indwells in our hearts. Now, the church is a community of believers. You are a church. 
But at the same time, uh, we are a gathering of churches. We are a community of believers. And as a community, we build bridges. We build relationship in that community. Christian life is about relationship. Do you believe in that? And someone would say, maybe you heard it, na hindi pamaraan sa religion. Not through religion, but through relation. It is not true religion, but it is through our relationship with God. And as much as important, let us remember, let us always remember that our relationship with each other is as much important as a church. Relation with each other is vital to the life of a church. And as a family of God, we love God. Amen? Oh, amen. Okay. Uh, we love God. Amen? amen? We love each other. Medyo, ano, mahina, konti, ano? Amen. But uh, we must have to love God and we love each other as a church. And we care for each other. How do we care for each other? By one anothering. A pastor, that's a new vocabulary. One anothering. Oh, where do you base that in the Bible? Do you know that there are 100 one another verses in the scripture? Well, you can look at it later. I'm going to read to you some. Love one another 16 times. Love one another. And we are devoted. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another above yourselves. Live in harmony with one another. Build up one another. Be like-minded towards each other. Accept one another. Admonish one another. Greet one another. Care for one another. Greet one another. And serve one another. Bear one another's burden. Forgive one another. And ano pa? Be patient with one another. Speak the truth in love to each other. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Submit to one another. Consider others better than yourselves. And look at the interest of one another. Bear one another. Teach one another. Comfort one another. Encourage one another. Exhort one another. Hindi tayo matapos, ano? Baka time na. But either these are one another verses. These are enough to tell us that a Christian life is an active life. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, in Lighthouse, are you living an active Christian life or a passive Christian life? Now, somehow, we have something to do as a church. Yes, salvation is free, but in the community of believers, we have something to do because God has given us gifts and talents. Amen? He has given us these things in order for us to, be, to live an active Christian life. Now, we must care for one another in tangible ways. Do you know what is tangible ways? Ways that not, not only in words, but also in action and something that we can see. Amen? It's easy to, to say, I love you with the love of the Lord, but what are the tangible ways of that love? Let us always remember uh, to respond in such a way. And we are going to care for one another, especially in these times of pandemic. We're going to care for one another. If this is indeed the start of the end times, we are going to care for one another as community of believers until the Lord returns. May that remind 
but that reminds us always, are you living an active Christian life? Now, what is keeping us from living an active Christian life? While the world is building, you know, walls, while the world is building mga ano yan, barriers, and look at the election and how it divides even the church. Have you noticed that? And how it divides even the family. And the family of God is not exempted. But we, the church, must actively build bridges. Maybe some relationships are broken because of the past election. It's time to build bridge, a bridge brick by brick. It's time to build communities, a place where, uh, where you share your love and you are nourished by God's word and by the love of others. Amen? So maybe some of you are involved in a small group or Bible study groups. That is where, how we, we can build communities. And may that encourage all of us. Now look at the church. And when we look at the church, we appreciate what it is to be a part of God's community. Now it wasn't easy to be part of the church during the early church. During those times. Because... It was tough and rampant on persecution during the time. Now, I'd like to say this. The church is being tried not only of our adversities and problems that we, that we undergo. We are also, the church is also being tried by prosperity. Do you know that? We are being tried by the comfort that we have. And we have become complacent even in our love for the Lord, in our love for each other as a church. But the fellowship here in, during the early church is the more persecution, the more they draw themselves closer to each other. Now, one of the description of the early church is that they are a caring church. They are known to be a caring church. Now, may nakita ako. Now, uh, one of the documents, and that is in AD 165, that there's a plague that struck the Roman Empire that really shook the world. Do you know the response of the government? The response of the government when plague hit the city. The Romans left the city, they left town, including the doctors. And one person uh, that they noted that non-Christians, non-Christians deserted those who began to be sick and fled from their dearest friends, and they cast them out into the streets when they were half dead and left the dead like refuse, unburied. But many Christians during the time, AD 165, many Christians didn't do that. They stayed in Rome and took care of the sick and dying. Why? What was the reason? Because the Christians believed that mercy is what Jesus called them to do. And to the Romans, to them, mercy is a character flaw. So do you, know, do you see the difference? And do you see... The difference right now from AD 65 and right now from in our present time. Because we are in this plague and we don't know what to do. And some churches couldn't even think of mercy. How do we reach out to people except that we preserve our lives? Of course, we want to stay alive. I don't but may we not forget that mercy is what God has told us uh, to do. Now the church, this is the church. Now the church here, the early church sets a model of a caring church. 
Now, we are going to, that's only uh, introduction. Uh, are, you, are you still there? In introduction, like And <laughs> we are going to look at, to look at Acts 2, 42 to 47. Keep your Bibles open to those verses. Because in these verses, he sets a model of a caring church. The New Testament church was a caring community because they devoted themselves to the work of the Lord. Now, the early church were people who care about the ministry. And we have here verse 42. Uh, shall we read this together? They devoted everybody. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Now the word here, the word here devoted is proskaterio. Uh, it is a common, uh, common one that connotes a steadfast single mind fidelity to certain course of action. Now I, I, I pick up three words here. Number one, the first word is steadfast and second steadfastness and second is single mindedness and the third one is fidelity. Now, that means they were SSF, okay? They were first S, first S is steadfast, second S, single-minded, single -minded. and third is fidelity. That means faithfulness. They were faithful. Let us, let us remind ourselves of, that, of those three. Steadfast, single-mindedness, and faithfulness. Now here, there are major areas where Christians devoted themselves to. Number one is the apostles' teaching. In this verse, when you say apostles' teaching, it includes the Jewish scripture. It includes also the teachings of Jesus Christ. And it includes the revelation from heaven from the Lord. This means that the Christians devoted themselves to the word of God. So how are we? Are we SSF to the word of God? Are we devoted to the word of God? The apostles teaching is fundamental to the Christian life. Do you believe in that? God's word is fundamental to our Christian life. Fundamentals are like basic uh, uh, are, are, are basics in sports. We know that. Now, when you play volleyball, the fundamentals, you have to know how to toss the ball. You have to know how to return the ball. Those are fun fundamentals. You have to know how to stop the ball. If there's lack of fundamentals in volleyball, that means you are losing. We are losing. Now, in the Christian life, doctrines or God's word are the fundamentals. You cannot say, Pastor, just teach the word and do away from doctrines. Why? It is like saying that, Pastor, you preach the word, but, but, uh, it is like saying, Pastor, let's play basketball, but we will do away from dribbling, we will do away from shooting. That means we cannot win because these are the fundamentals of the, of the sports. Now, in the Christian life, doctrines are fundamentals. Do you, know, do you see how important the doctrines are here? And Paul exhorts Timothy, watch your life and watch your doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Now, if you know doctrines, if you know the word of God, that means we must also apply God's word. We must, we must not only be hearers, but we should be doers of God's word. Now, there's a, there's a, I know, um, here, uh, someone wrote this, um, the book, uh, the book contains the mind of God, and I find this very beautiful. Uh, can you still read it? Uh, very far, I know. 
Uh, can we read it together? The book contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is a traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's character. Here paradise is restored, heaven is opened, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is his grand subject, our good is designed, and the glory of God is its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. Follow its precepts, and it will lead you to Calvary, to the empty tomb, to our resurrected life in Christ. Yes, to glory itself for eternity. Can you say amen to that? And that is the word of God. If, if you want a copy of that, uh, I have my, my uh, I'm, I'm leaving my PowerPoint here. It's not mine. It's not mine, actually. Now, we devote ourselves to the teaching of the word of God because the word of God is the life of the church. And we cannot grow spiritually without the word of God. Now, how is your appetite for God's word? How is your appetite for God's word? If there is something wrong with appetite, especially sa kids natin, you know, there must be something wrong with his health. And I believe it is also true among us in our spiritual lives. If we don't have appetite for God's word, there must be something wrong. It is time for us to go to the Lord. Lord, give me that hunger for your word. Give me the thirst for you and for your presence. We must be devoted to spiritual discipline of reading God's word. Do you know what Ephesians 6, 4 says? Ephesians 6, you remember? And 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children in anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now, the first part of this verse is very popular. Do not provoke your children. But many times we miss the second part, and that is the bringing up to the instruction and discipline of the Lord. Is it not true? So we do not only provoke, but we raise our children in the word of God. Now, while your kids, those who are here, my young couples, while your kids are in your home, do not let them slip through your finger without knowing the Savior. Amen? Amen. So they devoted themselves. And secondly, they devoted themselves to the fellowship. They were, they were SSF to the fellowship. Fellowship within the body of Christ is hard if we are not devoted to one another. Now, I have read this story. The students, the students were asked now to bring an object that represents the church, that is prominent to the church. And some of the children, um, they brought, uh, they brought crucifix, the cross, because in our worship the cross is the center. And some also brought the Bible because the Bible is the is the center of our worship. And some also brought the kneeler because they always pray during worship. But one boy brought a casserole, you know, casserola. Why are you bringing this casserola? Uh, because, teacher, we always have potluck in our church. <laughs> that represents his church. But I'm not saying that we make the potlucks at the center of the church, but it is saying something that fellowship is one major part of, of the church. Now, in the fellowship, we must be devoted to 
one another. It is in the fellowship that we encourage, that we build each other up. And there must, it is a place where, where when we fellowship, there must not be rich, there must not be poor, slaves and master, the Greek and the Jews, domestic helpers and monitors, Tagalog kaman, Chinese, or, or Ilongo, or Cebuano, or Bisaya in church. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? We don't think of status except that you are my brother, you are my sisters in Christ. Now, in the book of Acts, the word brothers and sisters, uh, the words are emphasized many, many times so that we can hug each other. But ngayon, bawal ang hugging. Ano? And uh, bawal ang, ang kumusta, alanganin ng iba. Siguro fist bumps na lang. We can fist bump each other. You are my brother. You are my sister in Christ. Amen. And in the assembly of the believers, let us remember that it is not only vertical in the assembly of believers, it is also horizontal. That means we worship, but we encourage each other and spur one another into good works. Do you know that many of the books in the scriptures are admonition to love one another? And do you know that that fellowship can heal a, uh, a wounded heart? Sino ang wounded ngayon? Ah, you don't have to raise your hand. Do you know that fellowship can heal a wounded heart? Now, it says here, um, an article says, that many of our daily conversations are actually mutual counseling sessions whereby we exchange the reassurance and advice that help us deal with routine stresses. In the fellowship, we engage each other in the conversation and sometimes intentional conversation. And the purpose is to encourage one another. And who knows that a person whom you are talking to after worship is a person who is at the edge, you know. And when you gave someone an encouragement, you just gave uh, you just spark the light of a dwindling soul or a dwindling light. We are, we are the lighthouse here. And sometimes believers, the light of believers are dwindling. And when we gather together, we boost the light of each other so that when we go out as a lighthouse, we go out to our workplace, we go out to our homes, we Shine that light of Jesus Christ. Amen? Because there are people, there are many people in darkness. There are many people who are drowning in darkness. They needed the light. And except they won't be saved unless they see the light of Jesus Christ. And we bear the light of that lighthouse. Now, Christian gathering is Christ-centered. It's also an other-centered and another thing, thirdly, they are devoted to the breaking of bread. The breaking of bread here is equivalent to communion. Do we do communion here once, once a month, right? Every first Sunday usually. Uh, yeah. And in the breaking of bread, the church commemorates the Lord's death and resurrection until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're not going to stop breaking bread. We're not going to stop communion until Christ returns. That means that those who anticipate the Lord's return join the communion. Amen? If we join that communion, if we join the Lord's table, that means we are saying to the world, we are saying to others that I am part of the family of God. I am part of the redeemed. And just as like the Israelites, you know, gather during the Passover and they rejoice over the salvation of the Lord, the redemption of the Lord. To us Christians, it's communion. We draw ourselves together in that communion table and thank the Lord 
and celebrate the salvation of salvation that the Lord gave us. Amen. And that is communion. And no wonder, small wonder, that some people call it Eucharist. And Eucharist means simply thanksgiving. Because it is a time that we thank God, Lord, thank you for your salvation. Thank you for redeeming us from our own Egypt. And now I have salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is how important the communion is. You always remember, my brothers and sisters, when we will be there, uh, the table won't be that small. We will be sitting at a table at a feast of the land with different tongues and languages. And that will be glory. We will look forward to that as we join in the communion. Be devoted uh, to the breaking of bread. And the church is devoted or to prayer. Jesus says that God's house is a house of prayer. And sometimes we do not know what to do with our church. Ano bang program magagawin ko? But you know once, if we pray as a church, you will never go wrong. Amen? Because Jesus himself says that my house is a house of prayer. Prayer is fundamental in the life of the church. And in fact, down from history, revival never happened without prayer. Revival only happened if God's people pray. And usually, usually the stat statistics of prayer meeting, uh, according to studies, is 10% of the church attendance. So if you have 10% of the Sunday worship attendance in the prayer meeting, that is normal. And that means if you go over 10%, of the attendance, there must be something going on. There must be something happening. And we expect that. And we will cultivate even our prayer, uh, our, our prayer life. And all the activities of the church must be, must be done with prayer. And many of the churches started in a prayer meeting. I don't know if Lighthouse is started in a prayer meeting, but most of the prayer, all of the churches started in a prayer meeting, and we should always do it until Jesus comes. And letter, uh, letter E is devoted in worship. They were steadfast, single-minded, and wor in worship. Now, here in verse 43, uh, it says, I will not have verse 43, everyone was filled with awe and wonder. It is important for us to be filled with awe and wonder in our worship. Why? Because if there is no awe and wonder before the Holy God, worship is impossible. It is only when we catch that glimpse of the beauty of Jesus Christ that the Lord is faithful, the Lord is good, the Lord is everlasting, the Lord does not change. He is the giver of love and everything we call our own. He is infinite, the everlasting God, and we give Him praise and glory. That is only, that should be, we respond in worship. And we can imagine millions of hymns and even spiritual songs and worship songs written to worship the King of Kings because they glaze, uh, they are gazing the beauty of that holiness. Oh, and wonder is our reverential fear before God. And what is your response when God is present? What is your response when he speaks to his word? What is your response when he blesses us? Worship is a response of who God is and what he has done. Now, lastly, okay, uh, it's time to wake up. Okay, kasi last na. 
Okay, devoted to multiply. Verse 47, they praised God and they were enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. It is clear that the church multiplication here is the work of God. Because uh, just as we said, this is God's original work. This is not because of someone's ingenuity or someone's genius. Because God is working. And what we can do is to obey the Lord. What we can do is to obey the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we cannot be witnesses for Jesus until we devote ourselves to Him. We cannot be witnesses of Jesus Christ until we are SSF. Ano yung SSF? And faithful. You know when we will be there? He will not ask us. You are very talented servant. And he will say to us, You are faithful servant. God will welcome us because we are faithful. And I believe that the best that the Lord can use is within our sphere of influence. And I believe that it is not by accident that the Lighthouse Church is here. We keep the light shining within the sphere of our influence. The challenge of the church today is to be devoted. Are you is Lighthouse SSF for the Lord? And we cannot be caring, caring church until we love Jesus more. Amen. First of all, we must love him more. And there are questions here we would like to ask ourselves. Do I love in a, in a rate of 1 to 10? Do I love God's word? Where am I in the rate of 1 to 10? Do I love my brothers and sisters in Christ? Do I love to thank God for the salvation I gave? And in the rate of 1 to 10, do I love to pray? Do I love to worship the Lord? Do I love to share God's love in the sphere of my influence? And I think the ultimate uh, question is, how much do I love my Lord? And it is my prayer that our love for the Lord will increase. Amen? And, and out of that, we can serve Him more fully. May God bless us all. Uh, thank you, uh, Reverend Raymond Lu, for the wonderful message. So now uh, I would like to move on to our uh, Tyson offering. So may I request our ushers to come forward. Uh, shall we all rise and pray for our tithes and offering?
Dear Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, uh, today we would just like to pray for our tithes and offering. We thank you for giving us a uh, desire, a heart to give, O oh Lord, uh, generously, O oh Lord. And we also acknowledge that everything we have is yours, O oh Lord, and we are just giving a portion of what you own. Please give us the wisdom, guide us, O oh Lord, how to manage your resources. Uh, Holy Spirit, please guide our leaders as they find out uh, a good way to use um, your resources, O oh Lord. And yes, O oh Lord, we just want to thank you for all the blessings, O oh Lord. Just let me pray. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, so for this week, uh, pastor is speaking at another church, so there are no official announce announcements. However, um, next week, pastor will be coming back, and he will be reporting to us what happened last week uh, regarding the medical mission and outreach. No? So in closing, uh, let me request uh, Reverend Raymond Lu for our closing prayer. as we pray. Father, we thank you, first of all, of your presence in this place. And we thank you, Lord, for the presence of each one. And even as we go out from this place, we pray that you will not go out, Lord, until we receive your blessing. And we pray, Father, that you will just touch our hearts and touch our lives. And Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will make us, continue to make us the person that you want us to be. Lord, some of us may be rejoicing and we rejoice with them, O oh God. And Father, some of us may be hurting, O oh God. I pray that you will extend your healing touch upon them. And some of us are hurt, maybe not physically, but also, but maybe uh, spiritually, oh God, because of the word said, oh God, we pray that just like the shepherd, just like a father, oh God, you will just touch each of our hearts, Lord, and renew us for your glory and honor. Tomorrow will be another week. We pray for your blessing. We pray, Lord, that you will renew our strength, not only physical strength, but inner strength and spiritual strength. We give you thanks. We give glory. Some of us may be spending time with our family today. We pray, Father, that you will just bless our time together. And Lord, as we go from this place, may your, your mercies be upon us. Keep each one. Lord, from any form of accident. And we pray, Father, that you will keep each one of us in good health so that we can serve you more fully. We give you thanks. We give you glory. To him who loves us and washes us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. May God bless us.
our worship service ends here. Uh, God bless and have a great uh, weekend.